My name is Nicola Winstanley. I'm a picture book author and I live in Hamilton, Ontario. I'm also a teacher at Humber College where I teach big kids how to write scripts and how to be successful at college. Uh, you can probably tell by my accent that I didn't grow up here. I grew up in New Zealand um, in Auckland. And I came to Canada when I was 23 years old. I was going to the University of Toronto uh, to do a PhD studying Shakespeare, history plays. And uh, though I didn't finish that PhD, I did manage to spend quite a few years doing a lot of reading of all kinds of uh, wonderful things. I became an author of books for young people um, because I've always been an avid reader and I never thought I wanted to be a writer, but I knew I wanted to read and I wanted to um, work in a university and be a professor from when I was about 10 years old because I thought uh, that would give me the opportunity to do a whole lot of reading. That's how much I liked it. Um, and then when I got a bit older and I got my first job, uh, was in publishing and I worked in some different publishing houses until I ended up in Kids Can Press um, uh, before Kids Can Press was part of Chorus and there I was an international rights agent and I had so much exposure to amazing kids books from all over the world and I thought you know I've read so much and um, I'm around all these books why don't I try writing one myself and um, so I did and I got some great feedback though it didn't go anywhere and then when my daughter was a baby um, I really started to write in earnest uh, I was at home with her and it really gave me that outlet that I needed Well, in isolation, I'm still working. Um, our college is still going, though we're online. And so I'm teaching, talking to students, although we're finished teaching now. Um, I've been baking a lot of bread and getting pretty good at sourdough bread. I've been doing a lot of drawing. I really like to draw. And I do a drawing diary. Um where I use a system by Linda Barry to do a quick uh, diary for the day with some drawings. I've been doing writing prompts. Um, I've been cleaning out a lot of closets and organizing a lot of things. Um, I've been reading, of course. Uh, it's amazing how quickly the day goes and I spend a lot of time walking my dog Lulu all around Hamilton um, in the morning and getting some fresh air and looking at all the great signs in people's windows. I have so much advice for aspiring creators I wouldn't even know where to start. Um, I would say that you just have to keep at it. I often find that I have this idea in my head of a story and in my head it's this beautiful thing when I put it down on paper and it's just going to be wonderful and full of all the best characters and language and then when I start to write it, it sort of falls apart and it wasn't what I expected at all. And I really realized then that my first attempt is just the beginning of it. So I just keep working at things to try and make them better. And I try not to be discouraged when it doesn't come out the way I want it to come out. Um, another really important thing I would say is that to be a creative person, especially to write, you really need to live in the world. It's a little bit hard right now, um, or it's a little bit circumscribed, but you do need to live in the world. If you just dive into 
movies and TV and other books and going everywhere with your headphones and listening to music and kind of shutting yourself off from reality all the time. You're not really interacting with the world in a way that you can use in your stories. That was my dog just running across the floor. You feel you have lots of ideas, but often there are other people's ideas and they're kind of filtering through you, but that's not the same as telling your own story. And to tell your own story or your own stories, you need to have experiences in the world and relationships with people. And you need to have a sense of purpose. Um, so it's really important to go out when you can, to look, to listen, to create friendships and meaningful relationships with people. Because in my experience, everything I write really comes out of my life. And that doesn't mean you can't fictionalize it and make it something really different. Um, but it starts there because you know that it makes sense to you. And we all have such unique and interesting lives. Um, when we pay attention to them, you may think your life is too boring, but I guarantee that you have gone through major transitions and events that really make for beautiful stories. So pay attention to your own life as probably the most important advice I have. I don't know if it's very surprising, but I'm really scared of heights. Um, and I've never been on a roller coaster. I'm not a risk taker at all. Um, and I often um, seem quite um, outgoing and talkative and I'm a teacher, um, but I'm really shy. And that often surprises people when I tell them that um, I feel very nervous often or I feel awkward in social situations because um, I'm really good at faking it. And I know from teaching lots of students that they're good at faking it too, or they often sit there feeling that they're the only ones that feel that way. Um, but that's certainly true for me. For me, it's feeling compelled to write, even when sometimes it's difficult or lonely or hard or it doesn't seem to take me anywhere. Um, for everything you see that's published with a writer, there are piles and piles of things that aren't. There are piles of things that are discarded and rejected. And it's really hard. It's really hard to get people um, when people say to you, I don't want to publish a story, it's not for us, it's not interesting, it's not as good as your other things, or you get feedback saying, I just don't understand this character, I don't know what's going on there. Um, that's hard. Rejection is hard. Um, but that's also the best part of being a writer is that you, you learn incredible resilience and that you begin to be able to separate yourself from the work that you do. And understand that you might not have created something fantastic, but it doesn't mean you're not a fantastic person. Um, and you really learn that you just have to keep going. Um, it doesn't mean that you believe that you're doing great things when they might not be. It just means that you make a commitment to, to keep getting better, to keep working at it. My writing is always inspired by my life. It always starts with something that happened to me. In my picture books, um, it's always something to do with my children or in How to Give Your Cat a Bath, My Animals. Although I should say I have never uh, tried to give a cat a bath because I guess that it wouldn't go very well, about the same as it does in the book. Um, and I take the things that happen to me and I kind of massage them and I work on their structure and I change things so that the story becomes more interesting. I'm also inspired by other people's writing, by the things that I read. Um, and just uh, 
the things I see around me, things I pick up on the internet. Uh, so um, sometimes things that my students do or say or interactions we have in the classroom. So I'm like a little magpie and I think any writer will tell you this. We're always just trying to pick up on the things um, that we see in our daily lives and ask ourselves, you know, what could we do with those? How could we turn those into a story? My favorite book as a child is a book I still have on my bookshelf, and it's a really weird picture book. Um, it's called Harvey's Hideout, and it's by uh, Lillian and Russell Hoban, who are a married couple who um, drew pictures and wrote stories together. Um, they were British. Um, my mother was British, so my early picture book reading was very skewed to British picture books rather than American ones. And in Harvey's hideout, um, Harvey and his sister uh, are fighting all the time because it's the summer holidays and they've got no one to play with. And it <laughs> it ends with, um, I think Harvey, I haven't read it for a while, he throws dirt at his sister and they get into trouble. And I, I just, I, I don't even know why I like it. It's just the pictures are so beautiful. And I like the fact that it doesn't sugarcoat the conflict. Um, it shows real sibling conflict because sometimes brothers and sisters are pretty mean to each other and the parents um, get quite grumpy and tell them off. And that's uh, that's something that you really notice in picture books at the, from the 60s, that the parents can be kind of mean as well. Um, but I think I really fondly love this book because on Christmas morning, um, I always wanted to get up as soon as the sun came up. And Christmas in New Zealand is summer, so the sun comes up early. And as soon as the sun came up, I wanted to get out of bed and run to the Christmas tree. And so I guess my mum had the brilliant idea that if she left a book for me um, in my stocking, which we put on the end of the bed, that I would read the book and that would hold me off marauding through the house for a little while which it totally did and I still remember finding that book and reading it straight away when I woke up because that was always what I wanted to do first if there was a book there I wanted to read it and I also remember finishing my first chapter book and I must have been about eight or nine um, and I have a strong memory of lying in bed on a Saturday morning I think I stayed there till maybe one o'clock just reading through this chapter book and finishing that book and feeling so incredibly proud of myself that I had got through all those pages and also just really relishing being able to be absorbed in another world like that and nothing else mattered. Um, just really becoming part of that story world. It's an amazing feeling. And that's a feeling that's very hard for kids now, quite often, I think that we live in such a fractured and distracting world. So to have those books where you can just absorb yourself and stay focused on one thing so steadily for that period of time is just an amazing gift. And that's why reading will never, ever go out of fashion and books will never disappear because there's something so magical about that experience. If I could be quarantined with one of my characters, it would be one of my latest characters from my book, Mel and Moe's Marvelous Balancing Act. Mel and Moe are twins, but Moe is the twin who likes to perform, and Moe does circus tricks with poodles and unicycles. And I don't know about you, but it can get a little bit boring being stuck inside. So I think Mo would make things really exciting, unicycling around the house and doing circus tricks. And uh, I really love poodles. So I would just love it um, to have these poodles in the house too. The more the better. If I could have like a hundred poodles here at once, that would make me pretty happy. I don't know if we'd have the room, but it would be really fun. Um, Mo goes on a high wire, which I wouldn't do because I'm scared of heights, but it might might try unicycle or at least I would watch. Cats 
do not like water usually there is the odd cat actually that likes water and some species of cats uh, but most house cats do not like water and they will scratch and bite you saying that sometimes you do have to give a cat a bath it gets skunked or gets into garbage or does something terrible to its fur but I have never had to do that luckily um, and I hope that I never have to I don't know how this rumor got started I think someone got it wrong on a bio once and that bio keeps getting repeated um, I used to have two cats and no dogs now I have one cat and one dog and my cat is called Stanley and my dog is called Lulu and Stanley is a big huge black cat and Lulu is a very tiny black dog she's a Shih Tzu poodle because I really like poodles and they are best friends they play together they bathe each other by licking one another's ears um, they like to snuggle up together when it's cold it's really cute and actually Lulu likes Stanley a lot more than Stanley likes Lulu but Stanley kind of puts up with her and sometimes he'll play so it's really nice I love animals I've always loved animals since I was a little kid um, my first cat when I was a kid was called Nefertiti also a black cat um, and I used to love that cat so much and I've always lived with a cat so really that rumor is quite unusual I used to be actually a cat person you know how there are cat people and dog people I was a cat person um, now I have a dog I'm kind of more of a dog person although as a lot of people tell me my dog kind of she's kind of a cat like she looks like a cat she plays with a cat she really likes cat food and this is kind of embarrassing but sometimes she uses the cat litter Parents and teachers can use my books in all kinds of ways. There are lots of activities you can do. Um, you can start by going to my website, nicolawinstanley.com, and there are some writing ideas there. Uh, but I'll give you a, a little rundown on some various things you can do. So Cinnamon Baby is a great book to use to talk about senses. So, for instance, you could read the story and then you could go through your house finding things that smell good and talk about and describe the smells to practice language. You could sit quietly and listen and describe what you hear, what you see. You could describe textures for feelings. So it's really about sensation and not just having those sensations and naming them, but using language to really try and describe those sensations in an interesting way, which is a really nice way to start off um, poetry so you could write a smell poem or a touch poem or a sound poem something like that um, my next book um, the pirate's bed uh, is about a bed who gets lost at sea and really misses his pirate but one of the big things in that story are the sounds the sounds of the pirates the sound of the sea and the seagulls and the storm so um, I've done an activity with that book before where kids used instruments to make a soundscape for their book. So you could try um, making some instruments if you don't have any or using whatever you have around the house, crinkly paper, pots, rice in a container, sticks on the ground, um, and record uh, a soundtrack that you could play while you are reading the story. Um, so you're doing a little bit of media there as well. Uh, a Bedtime Yarn is about a bear who um, doesn't want to go to sleep. And so his mother gives him balls of yarn in different colors. And that makes him imagine different colors. So again, um, you can use that idea to do color-based activities. So you could choose a color green or whatever and do a picture where you draw all the things you can think of that are green or all the things you can think of that are blue or you can just do it as an imaginative exercise you might close your eyes and and think okay so we have this color yellow what comes to mind when you think of yellow and just start listing all the things um, that you see in your mind's eye 
how to give your cat a bath um, is a great structure that you can use to practice sequence writing so kids are uh, sort of grade two grade three learn how to write in sequence and so um you can practice um, writing out the steps to create something for instance how to make a piece of toast it may seem evident to you but it's a really great language art skill for kids to get used to um, going through a clear process they have to decide things like who is the audience for the sequence how much detail do they need to include how much detail can they leave out i mean it really helps them start to think about writing in a concise and clear way which is a really important skill as kids go on in school and in malamo's marvelous balancing act um, you can really talk about opposites that's really what that book is about but it's also about combining things in creative ways so you could do a little exercise um, you could have a bag of um, pieces of paper with objects written on them in one hand and another bag with another objects in another hand choose one out of each bag and put the two together and see if you can write a story so you might pull potato and bicycle um, and you have to come up with a story of how you can make those two things come together so um it's a nice way to, to mash up ideas and it's a really useful prompt uh, to get you going for a poem or a story or a picture. Well, I have a new book that will be coming not for a while. Um, it will be coming in uh, fall 22 and it's another book about a cat being naughty called How to Teach Your Cat a Trick. Um, if you know cats, you know that they like doing tricks about as much as they like taking baths. Um, but there is a dog who makes an appearance in this book also. And it's a different cat and it's a different kid. Um, but that cat will send that kid through the same shenanigans and I hope it will be pretty funny. It seems a long way off. Um, that's how long things take. My first book cinnamon baby i wrote when my daughter audie was about six months old it was published when she was 12. so that was a really long time so you know 2022 isn't that far away thanks for listening to this interview i hope you have some ideas of things you can do while you're at home together um, using stories to work on writing and drawing pictures and just imagining and using language. Um, I hope that soon we are able to go outside and enjoy the beautiful summer and start paying attention to everything that's going on and using it for your creative life in the future. Bye. Bye.